the team at a landscape construction firm in Victoria is moving into designing using GK Plus and they're working on a drawing such as this one and they'd like some help speeding the process up and some tips. I think the most helpful thing you can do is to develop a template and the reason I say that is if we swing to a layout which they've populated already with their logo and client details and some of the characteristics of this um, title block are already populated and things such as the border around has already been set to 0.4 millimeters it's a thick line around here and if we come back to the model we've got a gardenscaping clump of species that we can use and these are all attached to their plant database file uh, this one the buxus which will move around here notice how these are all regular like so one useful thing to do is to grab a group such as this and, and just simply rotate them and you can see how easy it is so they're they're interested in learning about little tips remembering of course that uh, you do need to work accurately in your in your design work and everything is full size it's handy to bring in a a block this was a symbol of an suv that you bring in as it's been drawn correctly to size the other thing they've done is they've developed and tested their plant schedule and they've kept this clump or this group as a block and that means that if they change the number of species sorry the number of instances of a particular species you can see here is a, a grabilia banksii um, they're intending to develop a, uh, a retaining wall through this area and they want to use that banks here to work well for it and there are what two four six there now if we copy and put some more in then the number six in that plant schedule there for Grabilia banksii is six if we update the schedule now we'll update with the correct number but sometimes people leave symbols within a group such as that and that also gets counted so they're just little things that they are using to make life a little easier and work more efficiently they have jumped on our website and typed the search value shortcuts and what i'll do now is do that and move to the page they're interested in shortcuts but if you type the search word shortcut you get this page so we've grouped them l for line we'll start the line command peel for polyline and and so on b the block m text mt and then some modifier commands so it's probably worth printing this page out um, and uh, and work with it the right click menu items are also useful to know and some other control options are important we've embedded a little movie in there which might also help uh, with your understanding so let's go back to our drawing now and see if we can pick up any more little tips and guidelines well here we are back into the design and one tip that was mentioned there was if you want to start a command this through here is either a polyline or a line if i hold the control key down and just click on an entity like so it pops up the line command because that entity was drawn with a line command whereas if we come over here and hold our control key down here it picks up the block command and if we go to the blocks tab here 
you can see here are all the other blocks sitting, if you like, on the shelf, ready to be placed into the drawing. Another tip, and I'm no particular order of importance, another tip that I find very useful is the offset command. This is a, a line drawn here. Um, and if we use modify and offset, we can click on it and right click. Distance is currently one unit. If we had measured that driveway, let's say at um, well, um, 4, 5, double 4.5 meters wide, and we click, and then we're asked to specify the point on the side to offset. If I do that, can you see the we put the, the offset commanders offset that drawing, sorry, they offset that line there and popped it into position. So you can build a drawing up quite quickly using the offset command. As I look at this drawing, another thing worth doing, I think, is to load hatch pattern files. If I click on this hatch here, that's hatch name is here and the scale, we can change the scale quite easily. But if I do that, there's the polyline under it. And here are the vertices of the polyline running around there. So this is going to be some um, brickwork to enclose this little area here. And so if you are asked to or sorry, find the need to do some hatching. Let's just put in a circle and we're going to hatch it. So it's draw and hatch. Could use the HA shortcut for that. Um, we've got a random stone pattern. Changing the, the scale is important. What, what I aim to do is to get the density somewhere around two, three, four, just changing it. So I'd probably, let's, let's make it five and, sorry, let me do that again. Hatch, pick the entity, which I didn't do then. And we've got a density that's a little less than we had before and we'll okay it and in goes the hatching. So quite often, if you don't pay attention to that step, you'll put hatching in that's way too big and you'll find some difficulty dealing with it. You may even cause the software to crash. GCAD Plus is modeled on AutoCAD and AutoCAD is the main drafting software used by architects and engineers and it suffers the same problems. You do need to get the scaling right. Well, finally, if you search for tips on the website, you come into a whole lot of movies that give you a series of tips to help your drafting. Tip number one, it, it focuses on the status of various switches. Tip number two and three and four and five. So there's a, a large number of tips there, which should help the team to at uh, this particular landscape business improve their efficiency. So I hope that helps.